Hello to everyone, I hope this channel find you well, if you are new to this channel, please right now click the subscribe button. Again, welcome to ARC uh, 383 and I'm going to introduce our course and I'm going to introduce the platform that we are going to use. There are a few important things in our course. Uh, I'm going to show you very quickly. Yes, here we are. This is a, a staff website. If you just go to the K under the K, you can find my name. Uh, for those who didn't uh, have a course with me before, actually, I think anyone have a course with me before? Uh, I don't know because uh, before I was working in a construction department, but uh, since uh, two years ago, I am transferred to the architecture department. Yes, under the K, you are able to find my name, Kamiar Fulatli, here we are. And this is our course, ARC uh, 383. Uh, I mean, introduction to the GIS course. You are able to find everything that you need here. You don't need anything else. Uh, I mean, we are not using this uh, LMS or learning machine system. Instead of that, we will going to use uh, this page. So this is uh, our page. This is very important. We are going to use it. And all the necessary material, including the program, uh, these three program that we are going to use, maybe two of them, you have it already. The example and everything will be found here. A YouTube channel. Uh, I'm put all the video, all the record that we need here. You can also find some of the lecture from the previous semester. From previous semester, we are start to put in a YouTube because the LMS are a bit difficult through this upload the video and this kind of thing. So that's why we put it in the YouTube. If you are subscribed this channel, you are not lose any of our video. Yes. Now. Uh, let's very quickly go through the course outline. Our course outline can be found here. I was revised it since last year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And, but the overall course circumstance are almost same. For those who are inside the Cyprus, inside the Famagusta, if you have uh, anything, you can just come to A025 during my office hours, which is at the weekend, Friday, until almost 1 p.m. And you are able to write me an email from here. You can also make communication through this part that I put for you. Those who didn't have email or this sort of thing, uh, you can also able to write through this part for me. Yes. Uh, before I'm going to describe about the GIS, I'm just going very quickly uh, tell you we have a weekly program. Almost we have a 13 week. Uh, Let's call it 13 active week or 12 even, 12 active week or 12 session. And uh, during this 12 session, uh, we try to cover following topics, as you can see. Uh, we don't have any midterm exam and nothing for midterm exam, just a uh, homework. And we have just a final project. Uh, 
about the course participation, about the, let's say, grading criteria or letter grade, I am following the, this grade system. I mean the 90 over 100. We have also other method. Maybe you know that one also from, uh, I think, 85 or something. They consider it as an A. But I personally use this one. Uh, how you are able to capture your grade, the participation, the course participation is almost 15%. Uh, we have a classwork and homework, actually not a classwork, but a homework. It is 40% of your uh, grade. I will give you a homework and you have uh, one week to submit through the Teams your homework. And you have a final project after midterm. Uh, almost after midterm, you are able to know what is our course and you are able to generate a project. About the course, uh, is it clear up to moment? Because I can't uh, see you, but that's why I will going to ask you. Uh, is it everything fine up to moment? We have almost yes, 11 yes, uh, students. Uh, by the way, I'm, uh, maybe you hear from your friend, I'm a very flexible person. I am, uh, consider myself as your friend. Uh, you, you can easily communicate with me and tell me your need, what you want. And I'm always support my uh, student. That's why uh, you can easily make a communication with me. About the course, let's uh, make a very brief introduction to the course. Actually, up to the moment, I call it GIS or Geographical Information System. Them in the Turkish, we call it Geografi Bilgi Sistemleri or GBS. But for the this course, GIS, I mean, as uh, since you are architecture and you are going to graduate, this is uh, one of the very important, let's say, knowledge for you. I don't want to call it as a course because in this uh, semester, I'm going to give you a new knowledge. I don't know any of you here before about the GIS or geographical information system, but uh, as architect, uh, I think most of you later, when you graduate, you want to make a business. You want to make a money out of the architecture. Of course, some of you may be going to the further level, go to the master or PhD, or study for the social science and etc. Again, for that people also valid this uh, GIS, but uh, for those who wants to make a business or run a business from the architecture, this is very important things, even important than the, let's say this, uh, 3D technique or this presentation technique. Uh, most of the architecture thinks that it should be everything done by uh, 3D. Of course, right moment because of the pandemic, there is no other choice. But fundamentally, we have many people can able to do a uh, 3D, but there are few people are able to work with the GIS. But what is a GIS? Imagine uh, you make your office or you make your business. The first thing that customer come to you would say that I have, let's say, 500,000 US dollar cash and I want to investigate it on a, let's say, construction. Where should I build my, let's say, building? Or where should I build my, let's say, a supermarket? Or where should I build my office? This is the first important thing that you need to answer. If you can't answer this one, easily you lost your customer and he or she go to the next. It is not important you are good in a 3D or if you cannot say which place 
is a good place for you to do it, you lost it. After that, you are going to make a design and this kind of things. So it is very important for you, not only in a, let's say, architecture life, in a many other profession that we will learn through the course. Unfortunately, in this course, we are, you know, I'm going to give you, as it is coming from the course name, introduction to the GIS, we just give you a very brief information, but those who wish can able to follow it and go through of it later. And uh, you have also a very chance that you have this uh, lecture or this, let's say, knowledge in your faculty. It is very important because most of the university doesn't have uh, GIS in an architecture department because uh, GIS is uh, somehow combined with the geoscience department. But as I told you, uh, during this course, I will going to give you a very introduction, but still I try to keep it comprehensive that you can at the end, you are able to do a real project at the end of this, uh, I mean, semester. If we consider what you are going to learn at the end of this semester, first you are going to understand what is the basic structure, concept, and the theory of the GIS. This is first important things that you will learn. Uh, beside of it, you are able to do a bunch of hands-on experience uh, with, a, let's say, different sort of uh, GIS application or operation. Uh, through the homework, I will give you a different homework, actually. I think we have uh, eight or seven, I'm not sure, but we will see. But this eight or seven homework, uh, some of them by computer, actually most of them by computer, but two or one of them is by, you need to just write something for me. Uh, at the end of the course, you will learn what is the active and passive component of the GIS. You will understand what is a coordinate and what is a projection. It is very important, again, for architecture. Of course, uh, since you have a final project, you will learn how to make a project because you will decide for yourself what you are going to do Everything is free actually in this course. You will decide what sort of project you wish to do and you will do it. And I'm just uh, guide you. I'm just, if you have a question, you will come to me and I will tell you how you are able to solve this problem. And at the end, you will learn how to analyze, how to give a customer opportunity how to show which place is right or which place is wrong. And the important thing, you will learn a presentation technique with the map. About the course material, we are going to use a Microsoft team. I'm not going to use a model learning management system or LMS or learning management system. Uh, previous semester also I didn't use it. As I tell you, we have a, a staff web page. You are able to find the course that I gave and the information from here. I will going to announce the required information throughout the WhatsApp and our, let's say, teams through this application. And where was I? Yes, here. We are going to have a class discussion and lecture. I'm going to deliver uh, required knowledge to you throughout this platform. You are able to discuss with me. If you have a question, you will going to 
ask, I will try to answer. If I don't know, I will try to find the answer and deliver to you. And we are going to use a S3 ArcGIS ArcMap application. No other things we need for this course. This is all you will need uh, during this course. Any question, by the way, up to this moment? Okay, I'm going to start our first lecture and I will going to show you the very important things during this course. By the way, before I'm start, anyone up to now hear about the GIS? No, okay. Hocam, I used that application ArcGIS uh, maybe before last semester. I take it uh, some maps from there and then I use it in my site analysis. So we have uh, one user here, Ali, I think. Ali Riza, you use it then. Yes, Hocam. And then I check it some uh, level differences and other information I search from that application. OK, so it is good. So maybe you are going to help me if I have a problem during the course. You will going also to cooperate with me. Anyone else except Ali Riza? I, no one. OK. Emre Kishir, no, that application, Oja. Emre, I think he is no it, Oja. And Erhan. Erhan. Erhan no it. OK. So we have a two students. This is uh, first time that I hear uh, two people know the program. It is very happy for me, actually. I'm very happy to hear about it. Anyway, don't worry. Uh, you will going to learn everything. I will going to deliver the required knowledge to you. And uh, we have only one theoretical lecture, which is this one, except this one. Uh, the rest will be working with a program. And this is very important because we taught this one. Uh, you did not understand the concept of the program. OK, I'm going to start for our, let's say I call it first chapter. The second chapter is about a program, but the first chapter I'm uh, I'm call it as a chapter. In this chapter, we will learn a theory. I will cover the course aim when we looking from the course outline. So uh, this part already there, we explain it and now, as an overview, I have a few questions for you. First of all, anyone know what is the data? Or how we will able to convert it to the information? Or what is the difference between data and information? We have uh, some question actually right now here for you. If anyone know, it can be good to answer or do you know what is a information system? And I think a set of uh, informations collected together would be data. A set of information, it's uh, data. Ah, it could be. Any idea, anyone have uh, any other idea? No idea. So let's go and start. Uh, when we talk about the data, data is a set of value. It doesn't matter. It can be a qualitative, it can be a quantitative. It can be a fact, it can be a word, it can be one image. It can be a set of measurement, a variable or number. Data actually it's a raw. It's not process yet. Imagine this uh, 17. 
if someone tell you 17, what does that mean for you? Nothing. You don't understand what is 17. Is this centimeter? Is this kilometer? Is this kilogram? Is this people? Is this a house? No one know it. But this is a, a set of actually variable. It is unknown variable or it is a raw, we call it data. But if we want to convert it to the information, because information give you some knowledge, inform you as it is coming from the name, we need to put something with it. We need to process it. For instance, when I tell you this morning, uh, from Augusta, it's 18 centigrade. So you are get some knowledge from my sentences. You understand that today is a bit, let's say, cold. Maybe you need to put a jacket. So this is become information. But what is the information system? Actually, to know that uh, what is the information system, we need to know what is the system, first of all. Uh, imagine our course, our lecture, we are together, or our body. This is a system. System is, a, let's say, a body or a group that have some member. They work together. They are combined together. And they have a certain aim. This is a system. We are a system together. We have some member. We are 13 people together. We work together. I am work with you. You are work with me. And we have an aim. I want to give you a knowledge. And you want to get the knowledge at the end of this semester. And we have a process. This process uh, is, uh, let's say, includes some, let's say, lecture. It includes some homework. It includes some speech, some thinking. These are the process. For our body, we have a bunch of organs inside our body. These are work together in order to keep a human body alive. These are the system. But the information system, again, is a body or a, let's say a person which is record the data, the raw data, start to process on it and make the information in a very organized manner. This process could be automatic or could be manual. Imagine this one. Uh, if you just look at this map, this is right now give you a information in a very systematic manner. But this is through the process uh, from a GIS, through the data processing, through the some, let's say, procedure made this output and make this information for you about the COVID pandemic, let's say, distribution. This is about the information system. But why we need it? Is it important for us? Of course, it is important for us because we need to support our decision from this map, from this information, from this, uh, let's say, illustration, you are able to decide which place is too much dangerous to travel or which place is, in comparison to the other place, is quite safe. So this is support your decision. We call it actually decision support system or DSS. 
every day, every single moment even, you use decision support system through your body, through your life. Imagine you want to cross a street. You want to cross a street. You will just look at your surrounding, your, light, uh, your right, your left, see the speed of the vehicle, the transportation speed. And then you start to process in your mind. From your eye, you get some data and start to process it in your mind and start to decide, are you able to cross the street without a crash? You can cross the street safely or no, you need to wait for a few moments. Again, at the morning when you are wake up, you start to look at your time, your clock, get some data and start to process and manage and decision, make a decision about your time. What should we do? Should I doing my stuff fastly or I have some time? This is first thing in a business also. As I told you, imagine a you are architecture, actually you are architecture, and you are have a company, and the customer come to you, I have money, I want to open a supermarket in Famagusta. I'm just give an example from Famagusta because I all of you should know the city. Where you are going or which place is suitable for open this market you are architecture you need to tell to your customer he or she said i have this money i want to open a supermarket and as an architecture i need your help please show me which place i should open my supermarket then i gave you money to design it or to let's say create it for me if you are in a Famagusta, especially in front of the campus, in front of the campus, I mean in a Salamis road, in a main road, if you just look at there are, I can roughly say there are almost uh, more than six supermarkets in that place, in that, uh, let's say, core. We have some in a back road and we have some in a front road. And this is actually, if you imagine, this is a wrong decision. This is a wrong decision because when we have a six or five or let's say seven supermarket, the income will be shared between seven or uh, let's say six, uh, business owner. But imagine instead of that place, we open a supermarket in a neighborhood that doesn't have a supermarket. So that is a win-win business. Of course, maybe you said this is a, in front of the university. We have a, let's say, 20,000 active student. But imagine in this pandemic, we don't have any student actively live here. So those business really done. So this is a wrong decision. However, if you put this supermarket in other neighborhood, let's say in a Chanakkale, in a Dumlupunar, which have again uh, almost same population, but uh, with a less supermarket. So as an architecture, you need to uh, solve this problem. And with this one, you are going to able to understand and you are going to give, uh, let's say, support to the decision system. So as a very, let's say, brief a decision system, is a interactive, it could be a software-based system, 
or it could be in you, inside your mind manually, which is help you to compile a data and available information. It could be a document, it could be your observation, it could be your own knowledge in order to solve a problem or in order to give a model to the business or to the person or to the, let's say, organization. Is it clear up to now this uh, definition? I try to keep it very simple. Any question? Okay. Uh, I'm coming to next slide. Uh, actually, this is not. Yes, this is a slide. Let's put this one. I don't know. Let's leave it here as it is. If we consider a geographical information system or GIS or the Turkish one, Geography Bilgi Sistemleri, GBS, we have simply, we can say that G, it's going for a geographical, it could be a spatial data, it could be a Cartesian system uh, mathematically, it could be a coordination system, X, Y, Z, or anything that help us to address a specific object or a specific spot or a specific point. Anything that you are able to address it, it is uh, going for this uh, geographical part. We have uh, information. We are going to work with the information. Where is the information coming from our data? We learned that uh, information developed through the process of the data. And we need to keep our data and information in somewhere in a database. It could be a MS or Microsoft Access. It could be a Microsoft SQL. It could be a, let's say, a text file even. A text file is a very simple database. It could be a, in a DBase, Oracle, Excel, and any other available uh, active database type. We have a system. This system, uh, it could be a computer, it could be a people who working with this computer, it could be a hardware, it could be a software, it could be a network that combine them together and it could be a cloud. So all these together make our S or system, and these are stand for a GIS or GBS. Let's. I'm just going very briefly to talk about the history of the GIS. Uh, GIS. I'm from now on. I'm uh, call it as a GIS. Is not going to use this long name, geographical information system, and instead of it, I'm going to use a uh, GIS. The concept of the GIS first time uh, actually developed by uh, Roger Tomilson. He published a paper in 1968. He worked in uh, Canada by uh, Federal Department of the Forestry and the Rural Development. He start to generate this uh, system to keep the land inventory data inside of the GIS. They have a 
team that they start to let's say collect the information they start to store analyze manipulate them and the all information in a Canada land inventory the Roger Tomlinson known as a father of the GIS Tomlinson also believed that uh, this GIS could be a ground or could be a let's say base for many other field those who are going to use a spatial analyze technique this is about a GIS very quick history if I can go to the next page yes according to the his idea we can simply uh, define a GIS as a powerful actually don't worry about this these are all same these are all these definition all these five are same I just put the one the easy one that you it is easy for you you can use that one uh, but the main important thing in this all in, uh, definition is this few word. First of all, we need to know that it is a powerful tools that you are able to collect or you are able to capture the data. You need to first get some data, of course, raw. Actually, data is raw. And then you need to have a place to store them. It could be a paper, it could be a box, it could be a computer, it could be everywhere. So this data should be a store, as you can see, a storage, a store, or a store here, all of them same. After that, after you finish your job, you need to retrieve the data, you need to call your data. You need to look at to the data that you collect. You start to analyze them after you retrieve them. And at the, after analyze, you are able to make some output, especially in our field, our output is map. We need this uh, process to support our decision system. This is a definition that we can give to you. And if I want to explain it as a, let's imagine as a process of the site analysis, as a process of your design. When you go to the site, you start to get some data you start to collect some data oh we have uh, let's say 20 building over there surrounding the site uh, let's say five of them are let's say four floor three of them is a two floor most of them are residential we have some mixed use we have some office building so you start to collect this data after you collect your data you store it definitely for your case you definitely use a piece of paper or map you put some number for instance building number one have this information building number two have those information etc etc and you store them inside the paper on top of the paper a day after it you go for your paper you retrieve your paper bring your paper and start to analyze on it so we have uh, let's say five floor height building over there so maybe those buildings going to cover the sun for me we have this part, we have some office, we have those parts, some noisy area, and you start to analyze. You start to make your scenario, and then you make an output, the map, 
and accordingly you go to the next level for a designing process. As I told you, we have a different definition. I put uh, some here. We have many of them. I just put the famous one, but all of them is same, uh, let's say, following same criteria. And these are the reference for them. Those who are interested in it, you can go and look after it. But as I tell you, the good definition that I try to put it here is a powerful, let's say, system which have end-to-end -end process, the end-to-end -end process. Uh, it means that you start from one part and you get the result at the end of it. You don't need to give to the someone else to do the rest of the project. You do it everything from end to end, from beginning to the end of the process inside the tools. This process includes uh, capturing the data, storing, retrieval it, analyze and provide the output. Actually, the data that we are going to capture is uh, any data which have a location on the Earth surface. Uh, it means that actually it is a spatial data. It's a geographically uh, have a location. And our target or our aim, our goal is to support our operation management and uh, to support our decision. So this is, I think, a good definition for a GIS. Of course, any other definition can uh, capture or can uh, include this, let's say, five keyword, include the powerful set of the tools, include the spatial data, include the decision support system, is a uh, same definition and it is good. As a architectural, as a component, as a, let's say, if you want to make it as a diagram, again, we have some data input. We are put it inside the storage database or data set. A day after it, we go and call them, retrieve them. We write a query, we retrieve them. We start to transfer analyze them, process over it, and we have a result or output or report or display. This is a diagram. For us, 80% it's data. If you don't have a data, you cannot do anything. You cannot as puts a single step forward. First thing, 80% is a data. Without data, you cannot work. The process even not start. The 50% is a data management and manipulation of the data. You start to manage your data, you start to work on your data, and only 5% is your output or result. Therefore, the data is important. And the important thing is the correct data. Without correct data, even this process, uh, if it starts, it's not correct output. Therefore, try to always find a correct data for your process. We have a different bunch of the spatial data. It could be coming from uh, our observation. It could be coming from a failed survey. It could be coming uh, throughout the survey management, throughout the photogrammetry, remote sensing. All of these 
can be deliver us a data and data are very valuable very expensive the data because to find the data you need to put a many effort you need to travel to the site you need to uh, let's say buy some the data from the internet sources from the government or you need to hire some people to make a data for you therefore the data this first part it's expensive and also the let's say have a 80 percent weight of the process it's very important the rest the 50 percent is uh, the processing analyzing and programming you are start to analyze you are start to get some synthesis from the data that you have and the output it could be a a screen queries, it could be a map, it could be some sheet, it could be some table, hard copy or soft copy. This is about this diagram. As I told you, we have a six, let's say, main method to collect a spatial data. The spatial data, I mean the ones that have a coordinate in a X, Y, Z, direction or in a Cartesian. We have, a, let's say, a very simple hand GPS or global positioning system. We have a digitalization. You know how digitalized definitely you have some map. You start to scan it put it inside your AutoCAD as a background and on the foreground you start to draw through the line and make some, let's say, digital uh, vector. I'm going to tell you what is a raster and vector, maybe you know already. We have some remote sensing uh, or satellite. We have a uh, many satellites over the earth they are observing the earth for a different purpose some of them for a pollution some of them for a earth some of them for a atmosphere some of them for a military purpose the process of the those image or those scenes we call it in a geoscience sense is remote sensing. We have a photogrammetry mainly done by a aerial photography, by a plane, they have a special plane, they have a camera and they start to capture the air. Nowadays it's done mainly by a drone or UAV unmanned aerial vehicle we have a scanner in a big and a small size the big one used for a big map and the smallest one which is a typical one you will see it everywhere in a4 size and we have a field survey which is uh, mainly done by uh, survey engineering they are using uh, different tools such as a uh, total station such as uh, leveling which is typically known as a nivo and uh, theodolite these are different field survey of course we have a gps we have a 3d scanner nowadays and all of them can be useful for a purpose of uh, data collection. But now, what is a GIS application? I just give you uh, one of the application. At the beginning of the course, I tell you if someone wants to open a supermarket. 
there are many many other questions that you can ask where is the best place for an investment we ask it we want to know that how many building uh, let's say four floor building height are located in a, a Sakarya district or in a Karakul or Chanakkale or Dumlupunar. We want to know that how many exchange office we have in a Tehran or in any other city in a Churum or in Ankara or in Batman or in a Damascus. We want to know that what is the possible route from a specific point between a 500, let's say, meter distance. Who wants to go from, let's say, who wants to go from university to the castle? We want to know that how many possible routes are able. You want to, let's say, for from the military, from the military example, I'm going to give you a military example. You want to learn that where is the best place for landing the helicopter. You want to escort someone from, let's say, airport to the parliament. What is the safest road? What is the quickest road? Less traffic road? Which one is it? You want to simulate the war. You want to simulate the flood. You want to understand uh, green accessibility. You want to, as a planner, you want to make a park. You want to make a green space. We have many, many other Example, as a pandemic, as a COVID-19 pandemic, the first map that I show you, you are able to see which part is the dangerous part. Maybe the more conventional map that uh, you saw definitely inside the Instagram or in Facebook, the ones that Ministry of the Health, Kakatejia Ministry of the uh, TRNC Ministry of the Health, when they are distributed or they publish some map every day, it includes uh, Cyprus, the northern part. And we have uh, five or six, I think, uh, let's say, state of the northern part, Efke, Kyrenia, Nicosia, uh, Eskele, and uh, Gözelyurt or Morpho. We have this part and they put some number on it, for instance, how many uh, patients they find who have uh, COVID-19, for instance, in Lefkosia, let's say 16, in Magusa we don't have, or we have that much. This is published every day, definitely you saw it. This is in term of the health application. We have many other application too. Again, for a health, uh, here I want to give you an example from 1854, uh, four, sorry, 1854 from the London. That time there was a chlora outbreak. The person, the Dr. John Snow, he was actually, in my idea, I'm always said that instead of Roger Tomlinson, maybe he was a first GIS user. Actually, that time in a 1850 or those era, uh, there is no GIS or, of course, there is no even a computer. This man proved that the chlora coming from the water, not from the air. It's distributed from a drinking polluted water and not through the air. And what was 
this man hypothesis he have a let's say london map he have a london map uh, like this one he put a pump the water pump location the spatial location of the pump as you can see by this blue dot for instance this one that one and he find all these a uh, palm and this neighborhood and he go and check the patient who died from the chlora and he put it by this let's say red mark inside the map then he start to decide he start to make a sentence or he start this is a raw data this is a data and he start to analyze he said that this area the density of the dye patient from the chlora is more than everywhere else and he say definitely the chlora coming from this broad street pump which is over here and they close that pump and this problem was solved so john snow i think uh, as i told you it is the first gis user in my idea and it is known as father of the modern epidemiology uh, I think we have a John Snow somewhere else because sometimes my students tell me it is in a game or something, I'm not sure. Uh, but the John Snow do this uh, process through the GIS. We have other application as a knowledge base for a GIS. We have a application, as I told you, we have for a planning department, for a geology, for a health, for a marketing, for a criminal justice, for a police, for a department of the forestry, for a marketing, for architecture. We have many, many application area. I just gather some of them and put it here. We have a computer science management, which is include a graphic designer, those who make a visualization. Today we hear about it as a data science working with the big data. We have a database manager. We have system administrator, security, network, uh, hardware, and software developer. For a discipline which is related to the geography, we have a cartography, we have a photogrammetry, we have a remote sensing, and we have a landforms, a spatial statistic, and many, many other things. And all these disciplines are common in a GIS. Again, as a real term application, we can have the city information system, we can have a campus information system. Definitely, you saw in a website of our university, there is an interactive map which is connect through your student portal even, I think. Easily you can find which, let's say, classroom location. For instance, if you write, I don't know, I'm just give example. If you write uh, CTL, let's say 122, you can find it inside the campus. Where is the location of this, let's say, classroom or office? This is a campus information system. We have a forestry information system. They are keep the information about the trees, about the animals who live in a forest. 
we have a highway information system. Maybe definitely some of you uh, use it throughout the Google map when you want uh, travel from one spot to another place. You just write it my, let's say, from here to that destination. You just put two address and they start to guide you. They gave you some information, which road, which highway you are going to use. We have land information system. We have a land registry and cadastral information system, uh, mainly for a department of the land inventory or tapu catastro. We have a logistic information system, which is track for the, let's say, goods or the cargo or the vehicle, lorries, trailer. We have a vehicle tracking information system. We have a traffic information system. Again, in a Google Earth, maybe sometimes if you are travel, they gave you some alert. Of course, if you are connect to the internet, you will see that some of the road or some of adjacent road or some of the road in front of you are is red, marked as a red. It's give you information that we have some traffic over there. We have camp, actually I tell you a campus information system. We have an earthquake information system and we have many, many other different map information systems such as the COVID one nowadays. Uh, again, I don't want to repeat the same thing because we, this one is just a category of the other example that I told you. We have a local government for a, a street water and a sewer supply. That just give you a very simple from the government. Maybe you face with this kind of example many, many times. Imagine we have a finished building and we want to get an electric line or an water line to the building. Definitely these are supported by two different uh, organizations, one of them from, a, let's say, water department, the other one from the electric. If there is no management through of it, if there is no, let's say, a GIS between them, one day they are start to dig and put the electric line and then they cover it the second day or next week they dig same place and this time they put a water and they can cover it this is wrong if they have uh, this let's say information system or this geographical or this gis they just dig it in one day and they put all the necessary infrastructure include uh, water line sewer line uh, electric line or even telephone line. So this is uh, one of the important thing for a, even a garbage collection. For a business, for a retail, logistic, uh, we are almost give you for a battlefield, for this of course for a military and the defense and we have a scientific research for epidemiology and other things. I don't want to waste your time. Again, for a municipality, these are for a Famagusta actually. The GIS, I think it's not active anymore inside the website, but as you can see here, they have a water information system through this map. Here they have a parcel information and here if you click on any parcel they gave you the picture of the building facade. As I told you it is used for a city information system, for a illegal containment inspection, for this uh, saloon inspection or gejekondu 
or numerical addressing management, which is missing here. We don't have a numerical addressing management system in uh, Fon Augusta. I'm not sure about your city, but here if you want to travel, of course, most of the taxi driver, they know by a building name. You just say, I don't know, Halken 22 or Uzun 10, he know where is it or she know where is it, the taxi driver or this deliver, package deliver. But if someone asks me where is Uzun 10, I really don't have any idea about it. Definitely, if you, some of you invite me to the home, for instance, Uzun on or Sarp Oldu 5, let's say, you need to just start to guide me. Go to the Salamis Road, walk until, let's say, a gold strand. Then you see a shop which have a red board. Turn to the left or turn to the right. Go straight in that way, which is not a logical. Uh, for instance, in America, the ones that everyone I think know it, you need to just say a number. For instance, you say, I don't know. You just say, I don't know, Ricky Martin, number five. They know that this is a street number five. It's a building location. Of course, it's as a joke. I just say Ricky Martin, but it's in a managed meant model, not like here. And again, urban information management and infrastructure management. After application, we are going to come to the component of GIS. What are the GIS component? We have a five important component of GIS to establish a GIS work. First of all, we need to have some people. Without people, we cannot do anything. We need some personnel, we need some people, we need some active member. We need some data. We need some method to work with this data. And we need hardware and software. I'm going to explain each of them one by one. You know what is a hardware, any tangible part of a computer, any tangible part that you can touch it, such as, uh, I don't know, such as a hard disk, memory, a mouse, a CPU, or a graphic card, sound card, microphone, anything that you are able to touch it, it's uh, hardware. It could be in a centralized computer server to desktop computer or a mobile phone. These are all a uh, hardware. They can work in a standalone or they can be combined together as a network. We have a uh, software of course, the untangible part of the computer. Uh, it could be a TCP IP network or other protocol that uh, work on the network. It could be a operating system such as a Macintosh OS, such as a Linux, such as a Android, Symbian, Debian, Windows, or etc. These are all different bunch of operating system. We have an application which is run through the operating system uh, for our course, let's say ArcGIS, QGIS, any other application. There are some script or plugin you will add to your uh, program. For instance, uh, if you use a Microsoft Word, there is a 
Grammarly plugin that you can add into your Microsoft or you can add EndNote for your reference management or there are other other things. I'm going to the next slide. We have uh, two main category for software. All the software could be categorized on the commercial and open source software, even for our course. Uh, the commercial software for our course, for instance, are ArcGIS, Global Mapper, Geomedica, we have a manifold GIS, or we have a map info, even for those who work in a Turkey, actually it is not completely GIS. Uh, we have a map cat and uh, we have a geocat and we have a net cat also. These are the, again, a commercial one. But for open source, we have uh, UDIC, we have uh, OpenJAMP, uh, the very famous one is a QGIS. We have many, many different things such as uh, Grass GIS, Map Window, etc., and etc., Geoday. These are all open software. Of course, same thing in other software also valid. For instance, for uh, Microsoft Windows, it's a commercial one, and we have a uh, I think it is a uh, open office, something like this. I'm forget right now the name, or for a let's say Autodesk, AutoCAD. It is a commercial, but uh, we have a just CAD, which is uh, open source uh, software. There are uh, some benefit for a commercial and there are some uh, advantage or disadvantage. Both of them have some advantage and disadvantage. Uh, of course, most of the popular software are commercial software, such as our, uh, let's say, course software, such as the Microsoft Office, such as this Autodesk AutoCAD or Autodesk Architectural CAD, Revit, uh, Rhino or Lumion, I think even, these are all uh, well-known things are commercial. The commercial software always develop and redevelop through the relevant company, organization or firm. They have a, a very professional support, uh, which is mainly realized by the seller company or by the developer company. They have, uh, they model actually the, the software of these model are very close box. You cannot do any additive things to them because everything is compiled by the main developer and main manufacture and every source belong to the main company and accordingly the decision for a further strategy policy or a further let's say development always done by the main company and participant or the user have a very narrow influence on the production strategy. However, the open source software again have some advantage and disadvantage. The open source is open to everyone. You can find the source code, you can accordingly change the code and compile the program according to your wish. Most of the collaboration, it's done through the internet, through some room. People 
will talk and write the idea and they solve the problem, the support in terms of technically different user, they work together in to form. They, are, they have less complex structure because everything is open, you are able to read and follow the code. Uh, they, of course, support a different standard, different, uh, let's say, units, and different also method. You are also opportunity to integrate a different sort of the open source software together and make something different. And actually there is no strategy in this sort of software because the user uh, make the strategy. The user decide for the development. So they are not follow any specific strategy. This is about the software. As I told you, we have a people. There are different bunch of the people could be work in uh, GIS in terms of the data entry user. We have some data entry user. We have some analyzer people. We have some admin people. We have some engineer in terms of the topography, in terms of the civil engineering, in terms of the computer engineer. We have some technical member, those who can support. We have also some end user who get this, our output product. So we have a different people that work together in order to solve the real world problem. And we have a different method or technique to analyze the data and create a good output. It could be a data management, it could be a human resource management who manage those people together. We have some financial resource management, the quality control management or output management. We have a risk management, time management, and there are many standard and other things related to the method. Okay, uh, from here, uh, first of all, let's um, stop here at this moment. Is it any question up to now? No, John. Everything clear for everyone? You are able to follow everything? Everything fine? Any question yes, that you, Any question that you want to ask? Uh, 